Welcome to Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and home to the Commodores of Vanderbilt, who hope today they will hit all of the right notes. What a game and what potential drama we have in store. You've seen this script before. Top 10 team goes into a cauldron of emotion on the road and just hopes to be able to get out and tell about it. As we'll see, the number six team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide, taking on a fellow SEC opponent, the Vanderbilt Commodores. 48 Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. The Commodores will get us started with the opening kickoff. On the run from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. So the Alabama Crimson Tide offense will take the field for the first possession of this game. And as this star running back comes onto the field, everybody in the stadium knows he's going to get it. The defense knows it. Doing something about it is quite a different thing. It's hard to stop him. He's hard to handle because he can do it in so many ways. He can run by you. He can run through you. He really has the whole package, and that's why he's a superstar, and that's why they'll feed him early and often. They'll snap this one from the 30 on first and 10. They're going to run it to the right. Ran right through the defender, and now he's still running. In his sophomore season, he's really learned to find that running room. You want to settle everybody in on the road? You want to take the nerves away? Run the football. Really, really good job. The offensive line, they're physical and nasty. They're not nervous. They're not worried about this crowd getting loud. They just want to hit you right in the mouth, and they started the game off with some good physicality. Might as well give it to him again. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-gain land. How about the defender being a heat seeking missile he was on radar lock he found the football and flew down with some bad intentions got stuffed on first down it's second and ten looking to throw it's Milro. throws to the tight end makes a connection they get him on the ground after he gets enough to move the sticks it's a really nice looking throw this dude is a weapon in this offense at the quarterback position it's so funny you know i think back to guys like greg mcelroy and aj mccarran guys that may or may not have unfairly been tabbed as game managers and then you think of jalen hurts tua and bryce young in recent years and just how dynamic and versatile these guys were at the position and how they really helped take this offense to the next level watching this guy reminds me a little bit of that And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. I'll tell you what, that's great execution between the QB and receiver. They look like they could execute that throw in their sleep. Quarterback took his steps, threw it on time. Great route by the receiver. Nice job securing the catch. Alabama quickly back to the line. Looking to pass inside the red zone. You got it! Touchdown tie! You want to talk about a great way to start the game and set the tone early. It's so nice to have a quarterback just get himself into the game and get himself established. You make a couple throws, you lead your offense down the field, you score right off the bat. Could not have been a better start for that QB. Lining up for the PAT. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the score comes on a 17-yard throw for the touchdown. They're lining up to boot it away. And he takes this from inside the five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. So Vanderbilt's offense will go to work for the first time today. 
You know, David, both of these teams have a strong safety that can support the run and also disruptive in the passing game. I mean, it's just so nice to have a guy that's so physical, like a linebacker, but also can play like a DB. These guys are really revolutionizing defenses. They hit people, too. They are heat-seeking missiles. Nobody wants to run over the middle of the field against these guys. That's a great example of the defense there tackling the catch. As soon as the big fella caught the ball, down he went, not picking up the first. Now on second down. They'll keep it on the ground. That keeps the running game churning. Pick up a five to the 23. I know the passing game sells, and the passing game is exciting, but it's not exciting to get five or six yards of pop on the ground, but it will be very successful. And after that last run, we'll see if they keep it on the ground on third. To the air, it's Carter. Wide open downfield. He'll have enough for the first down, and they stop him at the 45. Third down, the focus of the defense has to shift. It has to change. We have to understand now exactly where the sticks are. We can't give up those plays for them to get beyond the sticks and get those first downs. And the Commodores have it with a first and ten. Handoff to the lone back. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. The big defensive tackles in the middle, they're not always the best pass rushers, but they are strong, and I say country strong. They put their hands on you, you feel it. They lock people out on the line of scrimmage. They create separation. They wrap running backs up, and usually they don't get out of the midst of those big boys. On second down, he'll fire. And that pressure just engulfed him. A sack for this defense. Not sure exactly what led to that, whether the protection wasn't right or the quarterback just didn't see it, but the result was a negative play and a sack. Well, one thing I do know is that quarterback had no chance to get that ball downfield. That pocket was breaking down, and it was breaking down quickly. There were just too many bodies in that backfield for the QB to make anything happen. This is a third and long. Looking downfield, and he needs a bunch. And here comes the pressure, and there he goes down again. Man, this home crowd was so jacked up, so excited to finally get the football after giving up points on the first drive and having to be quiet. Now they're quiet again. How about the defense coming in here, shutting this crowd up early and doing their job? The Commodores will line up to punt it away. He'll bring it back. It's Bernard. He gets it up to the 34-yard line before he stopped, and that's where the offense will set up shot. The tied offense rolls onto the field. Boy, David, they would love to stack another touchdown on top of that last drive. And this offense did such a good job on the last drive. Everything in rhythm, moved the ball down the field, didn't make those mistakes, Jesse, and they need to do it again on this one. Yeah, you're right. They had the defense on their heels. You wonder what sort of communication was going on that sideline. What sort of changes were they able to make because they got to stop the bleeding right now. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. On the ground, it's Haynes. And they make the stop, and that will likely bring us to the end of the first quarter. So Alabama takes the lead into the quarter break. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. Lots of time left, and we're ready to get back to it and open the second period. They've got it at the 41, third and short, trying to keep the chains moving. They're bringing heat. Keeps the play going. Nifty little scamper on this one. Enough for the first down, and he slides in safely. Defense in that situation just has to know to stay in their lanes. You know, it's hard enough to get this guy down on the ground, but you just can't let him escape. You got to build the fence. You got to build the cage. Keep him in the pocket, and that time, he was just able to use his athleticism to get outside and go pick up the first down. 
On the move, it's Milrow. Getting some heat. Finds a man in the middle. Really nice pickup on that one as they get it to the 36. It'll be first down. Really nice play getting that first down. And listen, I know when a lot of people think about the Crimson Tide recently, they think about the success they've had at the quarterback position. A big reason why, though, those guys have been playing so well, they're throwing the NFL talent all over the field. And this dude right here, he could be the next first-round pick at the wide receiver position from Ben. Caught in the backfield. It's Miller. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. It is so good for an offense early in the game to get in a rhythm and to start stringing first downs together. It makes the game really easy and puts that defense in a situation where they're starting to get tired. They want to sub. They want to get other guys in the field. Stringing first downs together like this makes it hard to defend. A little pre-snap eye candy for the defense. Release to the back. Catch in the middle. It's Haynes. And he's knocked down, but not before moving the chains. Another first down. Man, this, this defense this defense couldn't stop a nosebleed right now. It's that bad. On first down from the 13-yard line. They've marched to the red zone, and here they go. Moving out of the pocket. He's going to be able to pick up a few yards before the slide. You know, QBs want to make those big plays. They want, to, they want to put up the big stats. But when nothing's there, sometimes you just tuck the ball, get a minimal gain. I like the slide, by the way, too. Get down and don't take a big hit. Operating in the red zone here on second down. From the gun, they'll try to impose their will. He's got it down to the one-yard line right on the doorstep of Pater. And that's all you want, right? You want that first down. Uh, understand the situation. Understand I got to get north and south. Get a first down. Get a new set of downs. Alabama comes to the line with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. And will cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. That touchdown gives this team a pretty significant lead at this point. And that's what you want. You want to start fast. You want everything to come out, start clicking, make some plays. It doesn't always work that way, but when you do, man, the energy, the crowd, everybody's into it. Now the other team better respond. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point pushes the lead to 14. A 67-yard touchdown drive there. And they capped it off with a one-yard punt. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. And he passes on the touchback. Here he comes. Not nearly as much as he'd hoped when he brought it out in the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. Vanderbilt has the ball again, and here comes that Commodore offense. Now we'll get a chance to see if they can answer that last score, trailing by 14, Jesse. Yeah, and at this point in the game, I feel like offensively, you should go back to what's been working for you in this game. Don't be afraid to dial up plays that you've already had success with, running it and throwing it. It's okay to repeat plays down 14 at this point. And I would also say, Palmer, kind of understanding that my defense is not playing great, so I know offensively i got to put some good possessions together here, make something happen on this side of the football. The give to the lone running back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Goodness, that is the way you blow up a play quick, fast, and in a hurry. Hair on fire caused a wreck that had to be a blown assignment. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Trying to make that rush think on the draw play here. Gets the job done on third down as he gets to the 25 before he's brought down. All right, well, look, I know the defense was feeling real good about their run D coming into this one and how they've been playing up to this point, but finally, David, the offense breaks through and they finally generate something positive on the ground. And I can't tell you how easy it is. When you're going to throw the ball consistently and I know it, I'm going to pin my ears back and I'm going to get to the quarterback. It makes life really easy on the defensive line. 
But when you can have balance, now the defense doesn't know what's coming. They need more of this if they're going to be successful on offense. Grabbed over the middle. It's Stowers. And that is good versatility there and a big hit from the backer in pass coverage. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage. And nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. To throw, it's Carter. Coming after it. Finds his back in the middle. Makes the grab, and it's enough for the first down before he's dragged to the ground. Well, it's a great design on offense on that pass play there. You see they clear out the middle of the field. They leave a huge space wide open for the quarterback to attack. Nice timing on the throw. They'll rush to the line. Clock stopped for the first down. They'll set the chains and wind the clock. He's going to pass. Throws for the tight end. Got him downfield. Ripping through the defense and getting it all the way down to the 24-yard line. A big game there as they did a tremendous job working the middle of the field. Yeah, and if you're going to complete that throw, Reese, quarterbacks have got to play with anticipation. You've got to get it out of your hands early and give your receiver an opportunity before the defense gets to the ball. And the Commodores will snap it on first and ten. He wants to throw. Makes the grab. It's Stowers. And he's able to shed one tackle and pick up pretty good yardage. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. The Commodores look to do some damage in the red zone. He's looking for a man on second down. He finds his man. We got a timeout here late in the first half, and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. That was a nice pickup, running the drag route and finding that quiet, soft spot in the zone. Yeah, drag routes not only work against man coverage, they work against zone, too. If you can find the soft spot, the quarterback gets it. And here comes the heat, and they get home, and they get him at the 21. Well, I think one of the biggest reasons why this team is finding themselves in a hole here in the first half is this has been a sack party. They can't keep the defense off of their quarterback. They haven't been able to get the ball deep down the field, throwing it with the consistency they want because they can't keep their quarterback standing up straight. This pass rush has just been relentless, and you can bet your bottom dollar they're about to bring the heat again. And the pass is incomplete thanks to a big hit. Looked like the offense had a chance for a big play there, but the running back just could not reel that ball in. Facing third and long from the 21 and hoping not to settle for a field goal. Wants to throw. It's Carter. Firing to the right. Complete. And he's able to shed one tackle and gets a pretty good pickup. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. So they are denied a touchdown on this drive, but they'll try to put up a three spot before the break. Kick is good. The offense has three points to show for the drive. I know they're trailing going into the locker room here at halftime, but kicking that field goal gives them a little bit of a jolt, a little bit of a boost of momentum that they can carry with them into the second half. And there's a lot of football left to go here. I can't wait to see what happens. So they get the late field goal right before the half and not much time after this kickoff for an answer. From inside the 10-yard line, he'll bring it back. Coverage team there to make the stop. They avoid disaster, and that's the end of the first half. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, a stirring start to things today in Nashville as we say hello from our broadcast studios. And it's been said football is a game of inches. And guess what? Based on the comparison between third down conversion rate today and the average yard per play, how can you argue that? 
I mean, the low-lying fruit is to look at some of the explosive plays we've seen in panic. But really, this game is going to come down to which team is more efficient when they have the ball and how they play when it matters most. And with that, let's send it back to the guys at First Bank Stadium. Here he comes from inside his own five. And the returner is stopped. Vanderbilt has it back and heading out to go on the attack. Maybe adjustments or attitude or attitude adjustments. They've got to find a way to run the ball at least some here in the second half. I do think you said something that's important. I think running the football is an attitude. Like, it starts with the offensive lineman and being physical, having a nasty attitude. Running back, same thing. I think they need more of that in the second half. You know, and I think if any of you're this defense, you have an opportunity to make a statement here. Yeah, I know you guys went in at halftime and you riled yourselves up and you told yourself that you think you can run the ball on us. On this very first drive, we're going to prove to you, just like in the first 30 minutes, you cannot. Quick pass on the fly motion. They're able to get him stopped just shy of the first down marker. And the Commodores are in the hurry up. They'll try to move the chains on the ground. Dragged down to the turf, but not before getting the first down. That is how it's done on third down. And short. Uh, no doubt about it. An easy hole to get through and clearly get the first down. If you really want to simplify football, the low man wins. That time, the offense got the better of the D. Easily pick that up. The Commodores have it with a first and ten. Used to play fake. Now to throw. Got it behind the line. It's Stowers. And an absolutely fearless tackle. Giving up size. Still got him on the turf. Nice catch by the big target. Those big tight ends, you can tell in football, just becoming more and more of a weapon on every single team. That completion leaves us with second and medium. Off the play fake. Grabbed behind the line. It's Stowers. And the ball's on the ground. And the ball is going to land out of bounds. They'll maintain possession and pick up a few yards in the process. If this were a wider field, like maybe in Canada or something, that might have been a turnover. And they could have turned it into a rouge, eh? I mean, this was a great chance by the defense here. I just love the fact that they are flying around and trying to dislodge the football from these ball carriers. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. And the Commodores are on the move. They'll give it to him again. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. So he gets stuffed on first down, and now you have the offensive coordinator thinking a little bit. Yeah, we're probably going to have to throw it now on this second play, but what are we going to see defensively? Now that they know we're throwing, might they blitz us? Do I have to leave more guys in to block? There's a real cat-and-mouse game going on right now between these two coaching staffs. Trying to get to it. And the defense gets to the quarterback. And that's the second time he's gotten to the quarterback following the legacy of those great Crimson Tide pass rushers like Will Anderson, like Ryan Anderson or Tim Williams or the great Derek Thomas or Cornelius Bennett who could get to the quarterback. I like it. You're running out of oxygen naming all those guys. <laughs> and, and that's what they do. They're, they're a pressure defense, and they're going to come after the quarter. They ain't going to give you time to find open guys to beat their DBs, and they got so many great pass rushers that don't really like quarterbacks. So I really like them. Got his man downfield. Oh, and the defense in chase mode, and they finally get him down at the 35. Man, this offense is so dangerous, Reese. They've got dudes all over the field that can make plays. There's a big gainer in the pass game. You get a chunk of yards like that, now the defense is really on its heels. The Commodores in the hurry up. Power football with the run. 
That's a live ball. Defense covering it up and not letting the offense get it back. It's a turnover. Oh, and it's a hit like that that will absolutely light up the sideline, light up the stadium, change the momentum, and help you win a football game because that hit is what caused that fumble. Here comes that Alabama offense. That last drive really productive. David wound up with a touchdown. They'll try to do it again. Yeah, so I don't expect this offense to change too much, Reese. They had a great drive. They got the touchdown. Everything working. I would expect them to keep pushing this ball downhill. And just imagine if they could put another touchdown on the board right here. They could capture so much momentum in this game with back-to-back -back TDs. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. From the gun, leaves it on the inside with the back. Spins away with great balance. Defense caught out of position, and they get him down finally at the 38. Busting big runs like this is a total team effort. Obviously, the back has to find the hole, but you got to have everybody around them doing their job to make it a good play call. And everybody around them doesn't just mean the offensive line. The receivers getting their blocks downfield is a big deal, too. It's a huge deal. We always talk about them catching passes, but blocking is so important for their responsibilities. He is like a loose boulder just rolling to the 32. Well, this offense came into the game knowing they wanted to be physical, they wanted to establish the line of scrimmage, and they're running downhill right at this defense, and they're churning out positive yardage early. Got six on first down, now a lot of options on second and four. He leaves it with his back. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Man, oh man, the ball carrier was just shut down. And I tell you what, they need some push up front too, right? They got to move those defensive linemen out of the way. At least create a hole so your running back has a chance. Not there, he didn't have it. Offense breaks the huddle, it's third down. Back to pass, it's Milrow. Quick strike complete. Giving him his pads. Touchdown, Bama! And they take it in for six more points. When that receiver got three, it was all over. And it's so nice to have a receiver like this as a quarterback because you pad my stats. I like those long touchdown passes where I just threw it really short and he did the rest of the work. PAT unit on the field. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. A very efficient five-way scoring drive. And they top it off with a 31-yard toss for six. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. On the move from inside is five. Buys just enough space to cross the 25. Let's mark it at the 27-yard line. Vanderbilt has the ball again, and here comes that Commodore offense. This one feels as if it's starting to get away from them a little bit, Jesse. Yeah, Reese, there's a lot of teams in college football at this point that would just quit. So, David, we're going to find out a lot about this team right here. Yeah, just running out of opportunities. You give opportunities away like this, you're trailing every possession is going to be important from here on in. A first down for the offense. So Alabama takes the lead into the quarter break. They built a comfortable lead after three quarters of play. Let's take a look at how we got here. Just about ready to go in the fourth, and we'll see if any drama can be mustered. It'll be a first down from the 49-yard line. Back to throw, it's Carter. 
And he was hit just as he was releasing the pass, and it falls to the ground incomplete. This offensive line is not going to like watching the film back uh, tomorrow when they get the opportunity because they have gotten beat time and time again up front, especially in passing situations. All of the hits, all of the sacks this quarterback has taken is the biggest reason why they're going to lose this game. Fast motion from the offense. Fires downfield. And they won't be able to connect downfield looking for a big-time play. And it's just been that kind of day for this quarterback in this offense, guys. They have never been able to get into a rhythm throwing the football. Timing's been off. Accuracy hasn't been great. We've seen some drops. Just not in sync. And that's why they find themselves trailing by a lot right here late in the game. Pocket starts to collapse. And they got him for the sack. And you could easily argue the biggest reason this team is trailing here in the second half is because they have not been able to protect their quarterback tonight. They've already given up five sacks in the game, and you just saw another one right there. This offensive line has had problems all night long. Down by multiple possessions, you can't come up empty on this drive. They'll go for it on fourth down. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. And they get to him and sack the quarterback, and they'll stop the drive on downs. He had nowhere to go with the football. You could tell, surveying the field, somebody's got to get open to go make a play. Man, throw it up. Run it. Do something. You can't take a sack on fourth down. you got to give somebody an opportunity to make a play for you. The tied offense rolls onto the field. This offense has really been clicking in the game so far, Jesse. No doubt. Everything their play caller is dialing up, these guys offensively have been able to go out and execute, David. Yeah, and it's just maintaining the lead. Keep doing what you've been doing. you got a big lead. Let's just keep piling it on until they find an answer. Ball spotted at the 27. It's first and 10. They're getting this guy lathered up. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got a lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. Wide receiver now comes in motion. On the ground, it's Haynes. Not a lot there. Picks up one inside the 20 to the 19. And these defensive tackles just eat deeper. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. They, those guys, those running backs come in. They just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. Off play action. Got his man quickly. Tackled after picking up the first down. It's a tough position to be in on defense, right? You're trailing in this game late. You're thinking they're going to run it. we got to get bodies in line of scrimmage, get a stop, get the ball back. They go play action and throw it over your head. Tough spot to be in. Alabama rolling quickly downfield, set up with another first down. On the run, it's Milrow. Fires into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama! And the punishment has been extended. It's another good decision by the quarterback. You've got to be impressed here. On that one, he finds his tight end. But all game long, whether it's receivers or running backs or tight ends, wherever the best one-on-one -on -one matchup has been, he's been able to take advantage of it, and that's why they've been able to score so many points. Ready to try the point after. And the extra point gives him a 28-3 lead. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they top it off with a 14-yard pass for the touchdown. The kickoff team on the field as they'll send this one away. He'll bring it out. It's Carey. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Vanderbilt has it back and heading out to go on the attack. 
Trying to find his man on first down. Oh, he drops the football. He had him right down the gut of the field. Instead, it'll be second down. Well, the defense really stepped up in this game. They knew they had to slow down this passing attack. They knew they had some matchups. They were going to have to win one-on-one. -on -one. They've been able to do that, and as a result, they haven't allowed 200 passing yards in this game. On second down, he'll let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. It's a nice adjustment by the defense here. With a big lead in the game, you're putting extra DBs on the field, knowing the offense has to throw to get back in this one in the fourth quarter. So your best cover guys on the field, and they force an incompletion on the last one. Oh, man. Waste of time. To the air, it's Carter. On the run, fires downfield. He's got it. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. And the best thing about this, the offense can't worry about the scoreboard. Just keep trying to make plays like that, Jesse. I know a lot of people in the stadium probably feel like this game is over. and Maybe it's been over for a while, Reese. But don't tell that to this quarterback and his teammates. They're still out there scrapping and clawing. Going up top on first down. Got his man in the middle. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Really good defense. You know, you're trying to stay as close as you can to all these targets, and most importantly, those open field tackles and getting them on the ground as soon as they catch it. That's a major deal for defenses, and that was a good example there of it. Just missed his man, gave him just a little too much. And that's just the kind of game it's been for this quarterback in this offense. you got a great game plan all week long. You're watching it throughout practice. You think you're going to have a chance to light up the scoreboard, but they're just not able to hook up. you got to give this defense a ton of credit. They've done a great job in coverage. They've been breaking on passes. They've had their number, and that's why they're leading by as much as they are. And that's incomplete. A defender all over him. Knocked the ball to the ground. Fourth down coming up. Well, a lot of things haven't gone right for him. He saw an incompletion right there. It's been offense. It's been defense. They just haven't been able to click and get into a rhythm here. And now they're playing catch up. And you know they're going to be throwing at each and every play here in the fourth quarter. On fourth down, they'll try to throw it. It's complete to the left. He's not going to make it. And what a big stop for this defense. And they might be able to put this thing away. They'll run it to keep the clock moving. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. They're strong and they're scrawled. Defensive tackles, they're scrawled. They're such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance. When you got that 300-plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad, you tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. This offense has a second down play. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the steps. And this is exactly where you want to be as an offensive coordinator. Like when you've got the lead late in the football game, just run the football, eat the clock. Man, they put a good day together. They, they, they've, had a, they've had their way with this defense. A lot of positive things to point to. This is one of those weeks when you watch tape, it's going to be really fun to watch it. Not like when you get beat up. A lot of big plays from this offense. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Great job at contained by this defense. And in order to do that, the end man on the line of scrimmage defensively has got to be able to set the point and force the football back into traffic. And that's exactly what happened. So they're going to send out the field goal unit to try a long one. He says he's got a big leg. He's going to have to show it from 56 yards out. Splits the uprights from 56, and he's got three on the board. How nice is it as a head coach to have a kicker like this? It makes these decisions on fourth down so much easier. Just strut him out there and let him stroke it through the uprights.
First order of business here. Don't give up a big return. Then the defense just has to keep them out of the end zone. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Vanderbilt has the ball again, and here comes that Commodore offense. This thing got out of hand on them, but they'll try to finish with some pride here. And this one was a beatdown, and there's nothing you can do about it because this one's over. Jesse, now we got to start progressing for next week for the rest of this season so we don't let one bad game turn into two. Yeah, there are very few teams out there that won't watch game film, but they may want to skip this one. I mean, because it may hurt their confidence. They just need to turn the page and get ready for the next opponent and forget this day ever happened.